Walter Carter here with Fender's top model in the 1960s. It may come as a surprise, but it's not the Strat. It, it was the Jazzmaster in 1954. Fender hired a plant manager named Forrest White. Forrest spent most of his time managing the plant, but he did have a few ideas about guitars. One of them came from having seen a performance and having talked to Alvino Ray, who was a great multi-instrumentalist. Forrest had seen Alvino changing tone in the middle of a song and quickly trying to adjust, maybe from one lead part to a rhythm part, or, or just wanting two different tones and having to make all his tone adjustments. He thought it would be a good idea if there were some presets on a guitar. So with the flip of the switch, you could change the tone. So that was one of the ideas that came forth into the Jazzmaster. So what you see is the most basic two pickup control layout here, volume, tone, and then a selector switch. But up here with the flip of this switch, now you have a separate volume and tone. This switch is kind of limited. The idea was to provide a rhythm tone for jazz guitars that was a little darker and warmer. To that end, this switch eliminates the bridge pickup and also runs the neck pickup through a different value tone pot, which creates a different tone than if you just went to the neck pickup. And that's probably the genesis of the name Jazzmaster. It was envisioned for jazz players. A second innovation is the vibrato. It's important in that it shows that Leo Fender was constantly trying to improve uh, everything that he did. Where a Strat has a uh, bar going through the guitar, this has a bar that comes out this way. And also the bridge moves back and forth when you use the whammy bar. So it should stay in tune better. And the third part, and, and really the most innovative, is the offset waist. You see the waist here doesn't line up with the waist over here. If you go from the skinniest part, it's at an angle. The idea was that jazz players play sitting down and this would make for a more comfortable playing position for the guitar. That was so important to the, the guitar. And in fact, it was the only element that they thought was worth a patent. And in the patent, it showed, of course, a picture of the body, but it showed two drawings of guitar players sitting down and playing this guitar. With basically two control systems in a guitar, it was a little more expensive to make. Fender priced it at $349.50. The Strat at the time was $289.50. So this was the most expensive guitar in the line. Just by comparison, a Les Paul was uh, around $260 at that time. So it was definitely in the upper end. Fender got lucky, not with any jazz players that picked it up, but the Ventures, the great instrumental group, used a jazz master for the rhythm part in 1960 on Walk Don't Run, one of the all-time classic instrumental guitar records. Exactly what you want, but unfortunately, the Ventures weren't even on the album cover. On the front, it was four employees of Liberty Records and a model out front doing some hip little jazz move. And the guitars they showed were a Strat and a Gibson ES355. But the rhythm guitar player with the Pinchers was actually playing a jazz master. Whether he used the so-called rhythm circuit or not, uh, I don't know. But through the 60s, everybody had one. Dylan had one, Clapton had one, Hendrix had one, but it, it became nobody's main guitar. This was almost a forgotten guitar until 1977, and there's Elvis Costello on his debut album, My Aim Is True, with a jazz master. It was an older one, it was refinished. I would describe him as an angry strummer, probably the farthest thing away from a jazz player. Through the years, that became the kind of music that a jazz master would show up in, alt rock, grunge. It went out of production in 1981, but came back first in the Japanese line just a few years later, and then back in the Fender line. And I think Fender made a huge mistake aiming a guitar at a particular crowd. I think through the years, at least in the history of the Strat and the Les Paul, you make a guitar and then let the music catch up with it, let the music find it. And trying to tell people what was a rhythm sound, and I think that was a wrong move for them. So. What you have right now is a concept that's never been fully explored. Maybe this needs to be a different circuit. Maybe it is applicable to some other kind of music. If you have a jazz master and want to make your mark with a new, different sound, uh, the field is wide open.